Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. This chapter is about nonverbal communication. So it's chapter two of your textbook. Uh, I really think probably, I would say the most important chapter in the entire course. Understanding nonverbal communication. A lot of people spend countless amounts of time on this, understanding what people mean even when they say something different. Uh, you've, you've seen it a lot in uh, different types of movies, of course, and then also a lot in psych psychology and psychological type interpretation. So it's really interesting to talk about nonverbal communication. What I take from this slide, the majority of it, is 93% of, of what we say is interpreted by using nonverbal cues. So your hand mu movements, your pitch, and your tone of your speech, how you relay information, whether positive or negative, is usually in the nonverbal communication. I think it's really important that, you know, hiding emotions most of the time does not happen. If you're able to read people pretty clearly, you can see that sometimes what they mean is not what they say, but other times maybe what they mean is what they say. So nonverbal communication is really important as we look at communication in general. So people say we even use it online, of course, you know, some of your memes and some of your Emojis people put out there is an element of nonverbal communication. So it's a, a kind of the script of what we see on the verbal side of things uh, on the online platform or on text or in any kind of social media. So here's some categories of nonverbal communication pair language, environment, touch, space, and kinesthetics. So all these nonverbal communication categories are important to learn and to talk about and we'll go over each of those in the slides to come so pair language of course is further at pair language quality of voice rate of speech laughing crying i've never heard belching but i guess it could be a part of pair language and then hesitation or sighing can be a an element of your communication style that is interpreted in the segment of pair language so this is just an example. So it says, repeat the following sentence using tone of voice and your sensitive comments really helped the situation. So if you say that in a different way, like, and your sensitive comments really helped the situation, you know, it can be interpreted two different ways. So what that's saying is, if you say it lightly and calmly, it can mean genuine, uh, kind of genuine thought. And if you say it harshly, it can mean, you know, you didn't really do that. You're being a little bit scrupulous in your in your tone. So this, kinesthetics, so it's physical appearance, gestures, movement, mannerisms, facial expressions, and posture. To further talk about kinesics, facial expressions, postures, you know, they're, they're all uh, playing a role in this type of um, pair language or um, this nonverbal communication. So kinesics is not pair language, like I said earlier, that was a mistake. It's a an element of nonverbal communication that we talk further. So movement and mannerism. So when you're talking, of course, you know, the way you move on stage, potentially if you're giving a presentation, the way you move your hands, your hand gestures, your posture, if you're standing up straight, if you're slouched, this all plays into kinesics and how that, um, you know, is an element of our speech and tone and our communication towards others. So this shouldn't be saying double click to edit, it should be deleted there. So gestures are an element of pair language, of course. So, you know, this symbol right here, this is used a lot in an example form. So what I want you to know about this in different languages, this can mean something different. So I think it's in Australia, this means a very dirty word. And in the United States, it means okay, the okay symbol. So be careful with your gestures as you speak in front of people is what the slide is meant to show. So the same thing with this. Uh, this is an element, I think, in uh, a different country, of course, but this can mean something different in different types of languages and, and areas. So V for victory is another thing that means something in England different than it does in the, I think it's in Australia. So in Australia, it can mean a, uh, a dirty word, of course, and then and I think this is a, an element of, um, you know, hand touching the, the meaning in the United States may be something different than another country. Um, I spent a lot of time with uh, American Indian or um, Native American 
people in Alaska and, you know, they don't like to get touch or touch you or get close to you or give a handshake or anything that's kind of generalized in our culture. Uh, even if you look at them um, eye to eye, sometimes that can mean a, an element of disrespect. So it's really important to uh, keep an eye on things and, and make sure you, you know when you're talking to a certain subgroup of people that you're not being disrespectful. Uh, another element, you know, the middle finger, of course, in the United States, is going to be different than uh, something in a different country, of course. So in the United States, this is a pretty negative gesture. Uh, same thing with the thumbs up. Um, so your environment, I think, is really important when you're communicating. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this when you talk through history at um, during the Great Depression. Um, Everyone knows who FDR is, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, right? World War II president. Uh, he came up with an element of communication called the fireside chats, which is, you know, something I think that was really important to the United States to know where we were at in our recovery. So he knew where we were at our most negative and was able to speak to us uh, through the radio. And it reached a lot of Americans during their time of need. So they they ended up trusting the president more as we, you know, went through some challenging points in, in our country's history. And this was mainly for uh, the Great Depression, you know, and I think he continued it during World War II. Um, another area of communication of someone that was a great communicator, of course, was Fred Rogers. Uh, and he's used in the example below, but he was able to deliver really important messages to children through his television show. And I think he Kind of resonates with people today and how they're living and we talk further about your environment in regards to paralanguage if you sit behind a really nice desk and you have uncomfortable guest chairs of course that can mean you know a greater sense of of need or desire for the person that is in the you know the desk seating so a greater meaning of self-worth um, i think this is kind of like the feng shui element that you see a lot in offices and it can, you know, be used in positive and negative vibes depending on how uh, it's set up. You know, IKEA, for example, this is uh, a really interesting slide, and I think this was set up by Judy Wheel, our our um, lead, of course. And I think it's pretty elo uh, eloquent in how she came up with this. So when you look at IKEA, the environment of IKEA or the showroom. It's really interesting because you have to go through quite a bit of, you know, areas just to exit. And I always, when I get in there, if I, after one thing, I end up seeing way more than I wanted to because they make you go through, you know, every area just to get out of the building. So they do a pretty good job of this. Another way uh, or another place that has done really good at this in, in regards to making people go through showrooms or or casinos is las vegas of course when you go into a, a casino in las vegas it's hard to get out so the element and thought of the environment and the pair language there is that you'll stay a little longer because you're drawn to different things so some of the haptics of course touch handshake um status driven talks in regards to you know how you shake hands and such but um something you have to be uh, very aware of in today's age as to avoid sexual harassment. So shaking hands might not be the appropriate situation or gesture in certain circumstances or certain, um, I guess you could say certain crowds. So there's five levels of listening, of course, hearing, interpreting, retaining, and recalling. I'll leave you to that to make sure that you read over it. Some barriers to listening that you might have, physical hearing barriers, not concentrating on what is said, having preconceived thoughts and opinions to what someone means before they say it, and then, of course, not being interested in what is being said before it even starts. Let's get forward to paraphrase. Make sure you read over the slides. I think they're really important, but I'm going to try to limit these talks to 15 minutes so, you know, in the essence of communication, I don't lose you in regards to what I'm saying. So paraphrasing is repeating back what you hear in your own words. And I think this is really important, especially when you're working with clients or patients. You know, sometimes an element of hearing what they say and suggesting that it's important is making sure you repeat what they say so you understood it. And they might correct you. And, and that's okay. I think that's an important thing to understand wholly what people say in a given circumstance. 
Another thing, make eye contact. And I mentioned this earlier. So in some places and some elements of society, they consider eye contact as rude. So make sure you know your audience before you give eye contact and do it in an appropriate way. So make sure you sit facing the person. Don't you know do other things rather than listen. Nodding is an element of making sure that you understand what is being said and you're listening and then take notes if appropriate. I think that's really key and important, especially in college, make sure you take notes. A lot of people don't because of course they have great memory, but most of the time, I think the element of taking notes is a positive thing for all of us. Oh, let me mention one more thing. Don't cross your arms. It really means something negative when you cross your arms. It really turns the speaker off from communicating wholly with you, and it means to the speaker that you're not really listening or caring about what they say. So keep that in mind. That's just you know, a piece of uh, body language that I think can be interpreted pretty negatively. Talking further, you already know about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, psychological is at the bottom, self-actualization at the top. When you're speaking to someone, make sure you know your space parameters, your social space, your personal space, your intimate space. When you're speaking in a public scenario, you're not going to be in an intimate space. More than likely, you're going to be in the social space. And this is not with COVID, of course. You know, six feet is something that's important for all of us. And I know um, it's something that you take advantage of to keep yourself safe. Um, but the social space period is three feet, uh, or actually three meters. Uh, and that's a little over to nine feet. So you're going to be thinking to yourself, man, that's a long way. Um, my suggestion is keep it to the six foot range. You know, when you're talking about six foot, people can hear you. It's not super far away and it's pretty critical in regards to communication. Nine feet is a little much. This is a little video clip in regards to listening. I'm not going to go over it now, but uh, I pretty much said what I needed to say in regards to you know what you need to be thinking about with pair language. So I'm going to end the the presentation here. Make sure you read over all the material needed. Uh, and if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. Thanks so much for your hard work and uh, let me know if you need anything. Thanks.